Okay guys, now look in your brief atlas quick guide on page 26. We're going to now discuss C1. Okay. C1 vertebrae is also known as atlas. It's named after atlas in Greek mythology because it supports the head. So C1 aka atlas. Now guys, we're going to identify features in your book and remember guys, don't throw away directions. We're going to go from an anterior view to a posterior view. Now, the first feature in your book, number one, is the anterior arch. You can find the anterior arch here and here. Now, also another feature there is number two in your book, the anterior tubercle. This tubercle or tuberosity projects anteriorly out of C1, also known as the atlas. So, number one, the anterior arch. Number two, the anterior tubercle. Now, guys, moving from anterior to posterior, the next feature, number three, is the facet for the dens. Now, I'm going to have to turn the vertebrae around so that you can see that. This little feature right here in your book number three is the facet for the dens. This is where the dens or the odontoid on vertebrae two articulates. So again, guys, number one, the anterior arch. Number two, the anterior tubercle. If I um, turn C1 around, this facet right here is what articulates with the dens or the odontoid process on C2. Now moving right along, in your book number four, the superior articular process or facet is located right here. Now guys, let's pause for a moment. Here, this structure here, the superior articular process or facet, articulates with a feature on the skull. Now, here we have the occipital condyles on the skull. If I was to take C1 and put the articular processes or facets right there, that makes for a nice articulation. Now, when you have a bone and a bone that comes together, that's an articulation. Now, this joint is called the allanto-occipital joint, also known as the AO joint. Again, the superior articular facet or process articulates with the occipital condyles at the bottom of the skull. Here, the skull is faced anteriorly, this is anterior, and here, guys, you have that articulation. Okay, guys, now, number five in your book is the inferior articular process or facet. We're going to have to turn C1 to an inferior view, and here we have the inferior articular facets or processes. Now, turning it back to the superior view, the next feature, number six, are the transverse processes. So here we have transverse process, here transverse process. Now number seven, the transverse foramen, you will find that hole running right through the transverse process. So here we have transverse process, transverse foramen. Transverse process, transverse foramen. Now continue moving posteriorly here. Remember guys, you had an anterior arch. So now back here you have a posterior arch. And then moving right along to number nine, back here would be the posterior tubercle. And then the last feature that you can find on C1 is the large hole right in the center of the vertebrae. Guys, that's the vertebral foramen. Now let's um, recap. Number one, we have the anterior arch. Number two, 
the anterior tubercle, this projection anteriorly in front of the vertebrae. Number three, we have the facet for the dens or the odontoid process, which is located or can be found on C2. Number four, the superior articular facet or processes. Number five, from an inferior view, the inferior articular processes or facets. Number six, the transverse process, the transverse process. Number seven, the transverse foramen, the transverse foramen. And this is where our vertebral arteries run through. Number eight, the posterior arch. Here you can see it better from a posterior view. The posterior arch, the posterior arch. Number nine, the posterior tubercle. And then number 10, the vertebral foramen. And guys, you will not be responsible for number 11, the lateral mass. Again, you will not be responsible for number 11, the lateral mass.